Hi, my name is Tisha J of Tisha J's Writing Academy. And recently I sat in at a town hall and I discussed writing tips for parents and the replay did not save. So I'm recreating the replay here. I like to keep these videos brief because everybody has things that they need to do. But here's some quick writing tips and strategies that you can use at home with your writers. So this was the replay presentation. So I walked through all the parts and some of y'all kind of speed through. So um, background about me, I've been teaching online for over 10 years. I was a homeschooling, world schooling mom. The reason I say was we haven't world schooled since the pandemic, but we're gonna start again next semester. Um, I originally went into school for parent education, and then um, I started teaching online back in 2017 on the platform out school where the town hall took place. So the first thing I want you to ask yourself is do you enjoy writing? And then think about the pain points that you have when it comes to helping your child with their writing. And if you want to drop those in the comments and I'll make another video about those specific things and how you can kind of navigate through that when you are teaching your child how to write or when you're helping them with their writing. So the very basic foundation of writing is the structure, the development, and then adding description. Of course, handwriting, spelling, sentence construction, grammar, vocabulary, punctuation all ties in with those parts. But um, when they're writing a structured essay, they need to know how to write an introduction. They need to know how to develop the body paragraphs and how to write a conclusion. And then of course, how to revise and edit their work. Now, if they are showing any interest in structured writing, I'm gonna give you some fun ways to implement writing at home. You kind of put it in there without them even knowing that they're doing work. <laughs> so some at home activities, have them write out a recipe of their favorite meal. Um, let them choose their own writing prompts and make it fun. This is something me and my daughter did. We made little pumpkins with writing prompts, strips, I was gonna say scripts <laughs> with strips. You just pull them off and choose a different writing prompt. Have them write down the directions on how to play their favorite game in detail, or have them translate a talk, I mean, a text conversation to an actual like words. You know how they use like all these words and letters that aren't real words? Have them translate that for them. And then thinking about um, writing, oral presentations are fine. Using speech to text is fine. Help them start working on constructing those ideas. And remember, I put the structure, the development. So once they're comfortable with creating the content and structuring it, then they'll feel a little bit more at ease when they have to write it out. Some other at-home activities, do um, time writing activities. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it can be a prompt or free writing. So mix those in. It can also be like a sign writing. Give them options. When you give people options, not just you know, your children, but people, people like options. And then there's less pushback when they get to choose what they're going to do. So you can give them the option of five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then ask them, do you want to do a prompt? Do you want to do free writing? Do you want to have a sign writing? Mix those all in there. And then offer incentives. I know a lot of people are opposed to incentives for doing work. But everybody loves incentives. Adults like incentives. Children like incentives as well. So if they write a recipe, then you make the meal together. If they write out the instructions on how to play the game, you play the game together. An incentive doesn't have to be something extra, extra outside of the assignment. Like you're not going to pay them to write unless they decide to self-publish and then they can pay themselves. Some things that you want to avoid, and this is my own personal preference, Avoid using rubrics on the first draft. What happens when you use a rubric? You give them this guideline of your expectations and they'll either just try to meet those expectations with the bare minimum. They're like, okay, well, I did this, I did this, I did this, and now I'm done. Then they're stuck in this box. So don't use rubrics on the first draft. Give them some clear guidelines, but don't show them the whole rubric. I don't actually like using rubrics. I use them in my academy because parents prefer them they like to use them and i also have children who are like I, they need their rubrics so try to focus on structure and content first there will be spelling errors there will be punctuation errors but focus on letting them get the content together their ideas out on paper first um, another way you can prompt them into writing is use pictures show them a picture tell them to write about it use music use songs Think about how your child likes to learn best and incorporate that into how they're writing. So 
so some quick age appropriate writing things. So ages 7 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, and then 15 and up. Um, by seven and nine, they should have basic sentence structure down. So you have simple sentences. Sorry, I'm not going to edit this. <laughs> simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences. And then they need to know how, as they get older, the structure of different types of writing. So creative and formal, and then developing strategies for revisions and citing their resources. By now, they should know what plagiarism is and how not to do it. And then 15 and older, they should be able to write longer, more complex essays with and without prompts. And again, this is based off standards. So if your child may not be at each one of these levels at each one of those ages. They're working towards mastery. So don't force them to try to get to a point if they're not ready yet. And again, and this is just my own personal um, views when it comes to writing and teaching. Now we're gonna go over the very basics, the introduction. If you're working on structured writing, if you wanna stop here, that is fine because there is another video where I go over how to structure a formal essay. And in that video, it also has video links to some of the courses that I actually teach. But the introduction needs to include a hook, the main ideas in the thesis statement. There's another video about the thesis statement too. <laughs> the body paragraphs need topic sentences, supporting details, the final supporting evidence, a closing or transitional sentence. And then the conclusion, really basic way, is to flip the introduction upside down by rephrasing the thesis, restating the main ideas, then closing with a clincher, the final thought as it relates to the topic. Now, since this is just me re-recording the replay, I did take questions, I gave answers. So if you do have questions, just drop them in the comment section and I will be sure to respond to those.